pay. Regardless of what Mr. Stark thinks, the mirror table was guiding our hand reliably for centuries before the advent of computers. I couldn't begin to count the number of missions we've planned in this room over the centuries. Ambushes, sieges, open warfare. We did a bit of everything back mm. in the day. I've always considered this room to be the unofficial heart of the Abbey. Sure, there are quite a few other areas of interest, but this is where the action comes Let's together. see where the rest of my peeps are. Library... Blade's still here. Charlie's over there. Cool, cool. And then... We have... Oh, cool. Tuesday. Clear sky. I love how we have the weather, too. That's pretty awesome. Objectives. Analyze the gamma coil at the forge. Okay. I'm a vampire. I see everything. Hunter. Oh, okay, we are at the forge. Okay, okay, never mind. I was like, that is the forge. I still don't know. I need arcane keys for that. Okay. Gamma coil analysis. Now, I doubt advanced gamma thermodynamics was a hot topic at ye olde demon hunting school, so I'm just going to give you the condensed version. I appreciate, I appreciate that, Tony. That. Closest I've ever seen to this substance is pumping through Bruce's hmm. veins. Part gamma accelerant, part unknown element. Calling it coil for now, given its unique atomic structure. Man, I love acronyms. This stuff is more volatile than Nick Fury on a Monday morning. But Hydra doesn't seem to mind. So I can get stronger with They're it. They're using it to get stronger. Exactly. A few drops would make your average salamander look like Fin Fang Foom. Okay. Thankfully, with a little help from Dr. Spooky and our haunted oven over here, I think two can play at this game. Nice. You are not suggesting we start injecting ourselves with it. No, 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 no. Nothing like that. Though I can see some future applications for my energy drink line. I was thinking we apply this stuff towards upgrading our equipment. I like where this is going. Just give me a little time here and I can whip up some pretty fun toys. How about we give Hydra a taste of their own gamma-powered medicine for a change? I'm down with that. That's fine. Uh, give me a sec. Tony Stark can use okay. the coil material recovered in combat to create hero abilities. Only one of the abilities on offer can be selected, so choose wisely. All right. Analyze. Coil. I'm pretty sure Charlie left the steaming coil in the hallway. Third state of matter, indeed. Take a look. Thanks, Tony. Wow, he's doing the whole. He's picking some things up from Doctor Strange at those movements. For you. Hot off the press, or forge. All right, let's take a look. Heal, restore 36 health. I already own two. Quick strike, own two. Make him bleed. Oh, select one ability. That's cool. Make him bleed is such a really great ability. I mean, it's so useful. Um, but I also, I also like being a healer too. Um, but out of these three, out of these three, make him bleed is such a great ability. Like, bleeding is such a- it's, it's just a fantastic thing to have, just in general. Um, I mean, I want to be able to heal, don't get me wrong. But, I find myself, this card becoming more valuable. So I'm gonna kick the bleed. Hunter, when you have a minute, come meet me in the yard. Gain a copy of a currently equipped ability. If taken into the yard, duplicate abilities can be combined into new, more powerful versions. Oh! I want to have... See, I didn't know that. Had I known that, I would have gotten heal. Had I known that. Okay. What's up, Big H? I had not... See, the game should have told me that before. Why didn't you tell me that before? Oh, well. It's okay. It's all right. Talk to Blade in the yard. Welcome to the yard. 
At least that's what we're calling it these days. Okay. Caretaker put me in charge of your training. Too bad she didn't listen to me yesterday. Now that we know what we're up against, I think we can all use the practice. Any questions? Yeah, let's, let's tell me more about you. I did, but they are about you. Right when it's time to train? From all Sarah told us about you, she never described you as lazy. Of course she didn't. <laughs> Everyone loves you when you are dead. Tell me, does that mean you are half-loved? <laughs> oh, he doesn't she like jokes. You as a snarky jackass, but here we I are. didn't realize that joke meant, right, Tony meant Stark Jr. mean spirited. Ask your questions. I didn't know that it was mean spirited, but hmm. I guess I should avoid jokes that sometimes joking means that you're mean spirited. And that's I don't know. I, I feel like they could have done a better job of making that like making that more obvious. Um, about you. Can I ask about you? I guess. Um. Let's see. Uh. Is your name really Blade? Is your name really the Hunter? Yes. Oh, I. Really? Your mom, before she became the mother of demons, looked into your cradle and decided to name her firstborn child the Hunter. Well. That is how I understand it. It takes all kinds. So, is your name really Blade? <laughs> no. What is it? It's private. Oh. Is it embarrassing? He does, I feel like me and Blade are still... No. I thought we were getting along so well. But I only share it with friends. You do not consider me a friend? Not yet. Don't take it personally. Oh, man. It's because... Ugh. All right, I need we need to pedal back because I thought we were going. Me and Blade were getting along so well, but apparently, like that last joke didn't land very well. Um, how did you become a Dampier? You say that like I had a choice. I was born this way. That's a, that, that is possible? an answer. A vampire bit my mother. Problem was, I was still in the womb. I'm lucky I was even born. Don't know if that's how it always is, but that's the way it went down for me. How long have you been around? I don't exactly know. I think of myself as mid-twenties, maybe. I lost a lot of time. Much of the last century was a blur. I have occasional memories. Almost like coming up for air before being yanked back down into the depths. What happened? I killed a lot of vampires. I hadn't lost my mind exactly, but I got into a rhythm and never stopped. Never had a reason to stop. Not until I met Caretaker. And then? She gave me a reason to stop. Hmm. What brought you to the Abbey? Caretaker. About ten years ago, she brought me back to the real world. Gave me a place to stay until I came back to myself. Did she ever say why? She said she thought I'd be able to kill more vampires if I was acting on more than just instinct. But I know it was more than that. She gave me safe haven here at the Abbey. Something I'd never known. Must have read half the books in the library by the time I headed out. Mm. So when she reached out and asked me to be part of this weird little club, of course I showed up. Cool. How about the Midnight Suns? Tell me about the Midnight Suns. All right. Here, let me ask him more like that. Why did you join? Vampire hunting is a solitary affair. Ask, yeah, well, ask, yes, tell that I to Buffy. The right team. Is that all? Yeah, exactly. Just like no, Buffy. But that's all I'll share for now. You really want to know? Put it I'm in trying to be... I'm trying. If I trust you, I'll have more to say. All right, say. well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. What can you tell me about the others? Nothing. Ask them Wow, yourself. this Blade and I are really I'm not, not getting along. But that's okay. It's a challenge. Fine. Which one? Uh, tell me about 
Robbie. I want to know more what about, about Robbie? Robbie. I love Robbie. He's exactly what he seems. Well, sorta. I like people like that. Exactly what they seem. He's open with people. I He's like that. That's Sometimes why Robbie's that my comes favorite. Across as dopey, but don't get the wrong impression. He's quick to make friends, and once he does, he's your friend for life. I love that. So don't let him down, or I'll hold it against you. Oh no, I love that. Who else? He's, Robbie and I, we're, we're total BFFs. Tell me more about Nico. Tell me about Nico. She's the youngest, but she acts like she's in charge. Why let her act like that? She's usually right, and she keeps us on track. I didn't think we'd get along, but we wouldn't be the Midnight Suns without her. What makes you say that? She has a lot of heart, and that's why we let her. Anyone else? What do you know about magic? Keeps to herself. That is it? She's a private person. Until she lets you Just in, like Blade. that's all you need he, to I'm know. I'm sure he can understand that. When does she let people in? At her own pace. Respect that, and it'll happen faster I feel like a lot of that applies to Blade, too. Anyone else? All right, caretaker. Tell me what you think of Sarah. Well, there are a few people I tolerate, even less who I like. Sarah, I respect. She sees the big picture, and we're a part of it. I'd follow her to hell if I had to. And from what I understand, we may have to. I am surprised she commands such respect. I'm surprised that you're surprised. You know what she's like more than any of us. I do. Anybody else? That's it. Thank you, Blade. Nobody Can we else. be friends, please? Sure. We should grab a beer or something. Do you have any thoughts on the team as a whole? I think we're the only ones aware of the danger Lilith poses to this world. And I think we're pretty green. But enough training will get us through it. Speaking of training, we doing this or are we going to keep wasting daylight? All right, all right. Yeah, we should train. Let's go. I am ready to train. Finally. All right, my friendship is minus one. Uh, Blade, no. Friendship level is one out of 15. Mine with Doctor Strange is pretty good. And with Tony's pretty good. Blade and I were lacking. But I guess it does make things more interesting. I guess it does make more interesting when we're... Um, if I have someone who, you know who right off the bat doesn't particularly care for us versus Tony and Doctor Strange who seem to actually like us right out of the box. Okay. Heroes. So make them bleed. I can edit the deck. Heroes must have eight abilities. All right. I even got your, you your own card and you still don't like me? Okay, maximum two of the same ability allowed. Okay, so how do I... How do I make... I'm gonna have to find out. So if I go to... Inventory... Resources... Collections, Masterworks... Quest... I need to get... I need to start getting Blade some gifts. Maybe probably not some probably nothing that's garlic related. Solved mysteries around the abbey. The water rod. Oh, the water rod might let me fix some things. That's cool. I like that, having like little ability quests. Okay. View card details. So Show upgrade. Got it. Bleed deals damage in the turn. Show the upgrade. Draw two cards, next three damage. Oh, okay, so this is cool. So how do I actually do the upgrade? Um, 
show upgrade. Okay, so how do I actually... There's no tutorial. Normally they give a tutorial that shows how to... I'm gonna have to look that up. Show hero deck, left shift. Okay, so... Show artwork, okay. So if I go to, all right, I would have expected them to be a little bit more explicit, I guess. Tutorials, view tutorials, attack cards, edit deck, hero abilities. You gain a copy of Curly Equipped Ability. If taken to the yard, duplicate abilities can be combined into more powerful versions. Oh, if I take him to the yard. Hey. What's up? I should go. Thanks, Blade. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure. Okay. This team is certainly getting stronger and more dangerous every day. All right. So they're training. Can't wait to pound some steel. Gonna glue my last three times as big. That's what Froggy sounds like every time he hits the weights. Yeah. Bad guys better start running. He is Ghost Rider. You have problem? No, I don't have problem. Hi. I don't have problem. All right, let's take a look at this. Ooh, look. Nine gloss. Think Doctor Strange knows Merlin? I'm still waiting for someone to take this sword. Okay, upgrade abilities. Back again. If a hero possesses two copies of ability, they can combine to create a new, more powerful version. See, I was like, I was like, I thought, I even got your you a new ability card, and we're still not like great friends. All right. Make them bleed. Upgrade available. Okay, so now we can... And it requires 30 skill essence. Okay, cool. Nice. Draw. Make them bleed. Draw two cards the next three damage. Cards apply bleed. Light. I, that's awesome. See you around. Cool. Thank you. The other thing that I noticed is that this thing doesn't autosave nearly as often. I had, I basically quit after, I quit after I got my brow. new suit, and then it's it took me back to before I went to bed. So I'm afraid to like, is there a way, return to main menu, is there a way to, oh, I can save right here. That, see, there we, I, I'm so used to these games autosaving. Okay, okay. That's fine. Yeah, these... Okay, okay. Now I can do a manual save. Here we go. There we go. Manual save. Cool. So I'll do... I don't know. Angel 1. Okay. Now we're good. <laughs> okay, now we're... I... This is... I, I mean... I like how a lot of... A lot of this game is... Is, a, is pretty old, sc old school. Because... Yeah, like I had been accustomed to the auto saves after major scenes, after major cinematics, I was accustomed to that. But I realized that that wasn't always the case. Like back in the day, you did have to specifically manually save all the time with an occasional auto save. So I am finding that a lot of the things in this game harken back, no pun intended, you know, do take you back a little bit to how things were. Um, in the earlier tactical RPGs of maybe like the early 2000s. Uh, and I kind of like that. It gives it a little bit of a charm. Cool. So it looks like we're going to Hunter. get to know Carol, Captain Marvel. So I wanted to share my opinion with you all only because Sorry. I think I am... I didn't hurt you. I'm in the... I. I recognize that I am most likely in the minority, or at least the vocal. I'm going to call it the vocal minority. Um, in that, I genuinely enjoyed 
um, as blasphemous as that may be to some of you uh, fans of Marvel, I actually genuinely enjoyed the Captain Marvel movie, and even more so than that, which I also think might be polarizing, is I, I genuinely liked um, Brie, Larson's, uh, Brie Larson's version of Carol, um, even though I know that at least in the vocal majority uh, on social media, it seems like a lot of people didn't seem to care um, too much about Brie Larson's character or the movie itself. Now, I'm not going to speak on Brie Larson herself, as in the actor. I'm not going to speak on her or my opinion of her, because I don't know enough. And I know that people have strong feelings about her as an actor. But purely talking from the movie and the character of Carol Danvers, and I also have to admit that I may be a little, um, I may be a little, I'm going to say unbiased, I'll say that. I'm a little unbiased because I had no idea who Captain Marvel was or what her backstory was like or what her character is like. I had just like pretty much virtually every single Marvel character um, this, v besides uh, X-Men because I got pretty familiar with the X-Men because of the animated series and the movies in the early 2000s. But starting from Iron Man beyond, like Iron Man and Thor and even Captain America, I knew virtually nothing about those characters. So I went into Captain Marvel without any expectations for her or her storyline or whatever. And maybe that's why I feel this way, but I liked I liked um, the movie and I liked her character. I know some people complained that they didn't like Carol because she came off as... Uh, I mean, there's many reasons, and the ones I'm going to list are probably not going to be exhaustive. But I heard things like um, Carol didn't have any, like, character development. She was, like, a bland character. She didn't have anything to, like, overcome. She didn't learn anything, blah, 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 blah. Um, and also, I think people had a complaint about the, I guess, the feminist aspect of it, too. Uh, and again... In my personal opinion, let me start with the, I guess, what people call the blandness of her character, or the fact that she didn't have character growth. Uh, I actually like that about her character. I personally don't need... I know that in Marvel, Marvel more than DC uh, heroes, Marvel tends to have more quote-unquote relatable characters, characters like superheroes that do have flaws and they do have things to overcome and all that good stuff. And don't get me wrong, I 100% value that too. I like those kind of heroes as well, but sometimes I just, I don't necessarily need that from every single superhero. Sometimes I just want a superhero to just be a superhero and kick butt and take names. And you know, I don't necessarily need them to always have some sort of character growth all the time. Now, again, I'm the kind of person who loves character growth, uh, but it could, again, it could also just be because this is my first um, is there something introduction. you to tell me? I'm, I'm, t I'm telling, a lot of, telling people a lot about you, Carol. I, I just went in without any expectations or, or, you know, I just wanted to have fun with that movie. And, you know, she, she was a very strong character, male or female. She's just a strong character who um, just got things done. And, um, and you know, she, yeah, so maybe she might have had an attitude and maybe she might not be like as likable as some people, even though I liked her just fine. I liked her just fine, and I, I thought she was cool. You know, uh, could she have come off as arrogant? Sure, but I feel like so can Tony. You know, Tony Stark can come off as arrogant. Thor can definitely come off as arrogant uh, to the point that it actually kind of gets under my own skin. But I mean, there's certainly arrogant characters, and I don't know if it, for some people, this is just my theory, I don't know if for some people, whether they realize it or not, most likely not, if they, you know, feel strongly about Carol's, um, I guess, um, arrogance in her movie versus the male characters. Because I, I do believe that there is some, we can have a tendency to be partial, um, for us to put females in a certain, I'm sorry, Carol, to put females in a, 
separate uh, standard from men, you know, like, is it arrogance or is it confidence? Uh, though there's a whole thing about how people don't particularly care for women bosses versus male bosses. Even women, even a lot of women, like, admit that they prefer male bosses versus women bosses. And, you know, a lot, the, the unfortunate thing is women in the workforce, especially in certain industries, I feel like they have to be more assertive um, in order to be taken seriously. But the problem is there's that in my opinion, unfair balancing act that they have to do that many men don't, where they have to balance being assertive, being strong, you know, being proactive without seem like a total B, you know, without seeming like they, they're coming off um, too strongly, you know what I'm saying? And I, I feel like there is a general standard that is, you know, you know not necessarily intentional and People, again, I don't think necessarily are aware of it all the time. Um, you know, I think there is that bias. So I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not trying to invalidate anyone's opinions or saying that you are wrong for disliking Carol's character in the recent, you know, Marvel movie. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just, you know, just voicing, taking some consideration, you know, possible biases like that. And then the whole thing about like the MCU, the MCU universe and like the, you know, how women and all that good stuff. And just in general about, I think a lot of people are complaining about how the characters in Marvel universes are too woke or they have too much of an agenda and all that good stuff. So, I mean, full, full transparency, as an LGBTQ plus person, I am from a marginalized group. So what I think would be amazing to have more representation in LGBTQ+. Um, yes, 100%. You know, there's a lot of these backlashes against things like A Strange World. A Strange, a Strange World, I think, is a movie that happens to have an LGBTQ plus character in it. And even the most recent Buzz Lightyear movie, you know, people were kind of up in arms. Some people, and again, I think this is more of the vocal majority, not necessarily representative of what the majority actually feels, but there's a vocal majority that had like some backlash towards some LGBTQ related things to those movies. And people were complaining that Disney's becoming way too woke and that they have too much of an agenda. But I'm sorry, I'm partial as somebody who has been waiting patiently all, you know, for a very long time um, to have some sort of representation in these movies. Even if the movies themselves may not be as quote unquote good, I think one complaint about Strange World is not necessarily just because of the LGBTQ plusness, but because many people say it's not a great movie. And that's understandable. I get that. But at least it's something. Would I love to have had a very successful movie that had that happened to have LGBTQ plus people in it? Yes, of course. Of course. But you know, when I didn't have anything to begin with, you know, part of me at least wants to have something. Um, so, yeah. So that's that's like how I feel about it personally. And obviously, your mileage may vary. You can disagree with me, but I do feel that I applaud wokeness because I think it's about time. And should the quality of those shows, you know, can they be better? Sure, of course they can be. This writing could be better, the acting could be better, whatever, that's fine. Sure, but I mean, I think we have to start somewhere, personally, in order for there to be more change. In my opinion, like, change in the right direction. Um, so, anyway, I had, to, I, had to, I had to talk about that because, again, Captain Marvel was kind of what triggered it, and I really wanted to get to know this Captain Marvel.